So Dante and Virgil cross the river and they reach the city of Dis. And this is the Italian name for Satan or Lucifer. And once they reach these shores, Dante realizes that it gets more severe as Virgil explains to him that upper hell and lower hell are divided. And lower hell is meant for those sinners who have committed the worst crimes, those of the sins of malice. And there's another short Discovery Channel clip for you guys to watch. Dante Alighieri wrote the Inferno for the widest possible readership. He wanted people to realize that the choices we make in life have significant consequences. To illustrate the idea that not all sins are created equal, Dante placed a walled division between upper and lower hell, distinguishing sins of weakness from sins of malice. There's the evil that comes from human weakness, where we simply slip and slide into the kind of mistakes and choices that are not helpful to our growth, and those kinds of choices that may in fact hurt others by the consequences, but we didn't really intend them. We, we weren't trying to hurt someone else. Or the other kind, where people are genuinely malicious. They want to hurt someone else for whatever reason rationalized in their own heads. Dante and Virgil are crossing the river Styx to enter the walled city of Dis in Lower Hell. We had progressed into the deep dug moats that circle near the walls of that bleak city which seemed cast of solid iron. Even in hell, those guilty of the most violent and horrific acts have to be locked up and guarded. Although Dante didn't commit many of the sins that he faces in the poem, he is still forcing himself to see his own reflection within the sinners of hell. By doing this, he has a chance to change his eternal destiny. In his quest to return to awareness from despair, Dante often looks to his guide, Virgil. Virgil helps Dante face his dark side, his sins and the errors of his judgment. Only then can Dante emerge into the light of right thinking. Dante needs Virgil to guide him through the process because the writer, Dante, thinks that no one can do this pilgrimage alone. That this is really a communal effort. Yes, you make your own choices, but without a guide, you might not get there. Dante wants his readers to see that the sin is a choice and the wages of sin are the death of the soul. Why do we choose to sin and wither? asks that question. He says, who gathers together so much torment? And in some ways, the answer is that we do. Inferno, in some ways, is a kind of schooling of Dante's will. He sees the spectacle or pageant of all the ways souls wound themselves in order to school his will in a better direction. So Dante and Virgil realize that there's no turning back now once they've reached this particular place in hell, the shores of this. So as they progress closer and closer to the ninth circle, first they come across the sins of the heretics. So this is circle six. And the heretics were people who denied immortality and therefore denied God. So these might be considered the, um, the atheists. So because they believe that the soul dies with the body, the, the contrapasso is that they suffer that particular hate, uh, fate in hell. So they believe that, you know, that their soul wouldn't ascend to heaven, that there was no such thing as a god. And so if they were cremated or buried alive, they would endure that punishment forever in hell. Circle 7 is reserved for the violent and the bestial. 
and it's divided into three different sections. So as Dante and Virgil travel across these different planes, first they find the sinners who are violence against their neighbors, so it could be friends as well, uh, violence against self, and then finally violence against God. So the next few slides will take us through each one of these rounds or sub-circles. So circle seven is the outer ring. Uh, this is violence against neighbors. So these would be the murderers and war makers. These would be ruthless generals or warriors. Um, so their contrapasso or their punishment is that they're immersed in boiling blood, symbolic of the blood of those who they killed. A lot of times these would be innocent people. And so while they were in the blood being boiled, anytime they would try and come up out of that, centaurs um, would shoot arrows at them or throw spears at them and commit violence against them, furthering the contrapasso that because they committed violence to others, they have violence done to them. But the middle ring is for violence against self. So this is the wood of the suicides. And because the sinners here took their own lives into their own hands and, and tried to control them, in death they have no control over their body. So their souls are encased in trees, so they can never hurt themselves, they can't move. Um, on top of that, an additional punishment is these harpies, pictured here, uh, gnaw at their branches, scratch their bark, um, pick their leaves, and they can feel that pain. And so because, again, they took control of their own lives on earth, they have no control of their lives in hell. So circle seven is the innermost ring. Um, this is violence against God. So this is the third round here. And... This particular circle is reserved for the blasphemers, the sodomites, um, all of those people who committed profane acts deliberately against God, and in particular the church. So their punishment here is that they're laid over burning sand and forced to run ceaselessly around in circles with no guidance um, from God. Additionally, there's fire that rains down from the sky, and this is all symbolic of God's wrath. So because they spoke out against God and didn't believe in his wrath. In hell, they have to endure the biblical wrath of God. So circle seven is called Malbolgia. And if any of you have heard or read or even seen the movie um, of the comic book Spawn, Malbolgia is actually the name of hell that they give in that comic book. So another kind of modern day reference. All right, so Malbolgia contains the fraudulent sinners so fraud is the big one here. Um, so each one of these sinners are placed in their own ditch or cavern or pouch, depending on the translation that you're reading. And this particular slide shows all, a little bit of the contrapostles for each one of those pouches. So if you can imagine Dante and Virgil walking across this circle, they look down into a cavern or ditch and they see these particular sinners and Dante and Virgil have a conversation back and forth as to what the punishment is for the particular sin. So I'll call your attention to a couple of these. First one is the seducers. So they always have to run in opposite directions. And additionally, to keep them moving, they're whipped by demons. So because they brought people closer to them in life, in death, they can never have people close to them. Um, the flatterers here um, would be considered those who, you know, uh, talk crap. So they have to lie up to their neck in human feces. Additionally, every time they speak, crap or excrement comes out of their mouths because that's what they, they talk. Um, so the simoniacs, these are people who um, gave pardons in exchange for gold. So what happens is they're, um, they, they were fraudulent representatives of the church. So instead of getting baptized in water, they're placed headfirst in fire. So it's kind of this reverse baptism. Um, the saucers were kind of people who are fortune tellers who claim to see the future, and nobody can do that. And so their heads are actually put backwards on their body, so they're never able to see for it. Um, a couple others, the hypocrites. So these are people who say one thing, mean another. So they have these really nice coats on the outside, and inside they're lined with lead, and they just have to walk around in a circle with this weight on them. So you can see on the outside they present something, but inside it's totally different. Um, the thieves, they're chased by snakes, and so the snakes are actually thieves as well. So every time a snake bites a thief, they turn into 
a snake and in order to turn back into a person they have to bite another thief so it's that idea that if um, if you're a thief and you commit robbery that the cycle um, is everlasting um, what's another oh the sores of discord um, these would be people who um, say talk crap they're trying to uh, break people or relationships up so in turn their bodies would be ripped apart because that's what they try to do to other people so they could be walking around and they, um, their legs fall off or these huge cuts open up and they have to endure that pain over and over every day so these are just some pictures of those different pouches so the first one is the falsifiers the simoniacs um, these are the sores of discord you can see their um, limbs chopped off and then the last one here is the pit of vipers so the snakes biting the thieves okay so in the path to the ninth circle um, Dante and Virgil can't get there by walking so they're lowered by these giants there through the next circle 